Hi. Uh, so today, uh, I want to thank the organizers uh, for the opportunity to speak today, and uh, I really appreciate it. And I want to thank everyone for joining. Um, I will be talking about our next generation quantum system. The wave has been building processors for some time now, <clears throat> uh, delivering successively more powerful quantum annealing systems. Our current generation advantage system has uh, over 5,000 qubits, 40,000 couplers. <clears throat> and uh, so the question is, what's next? Uh, to motivate our design choices that we are making for our next generation system, I'm going to borrow heavily from the work that my colleagues have already presented this week. Um, it's that work that, that is really driving quantum annealing technology forward, that work and, and really the work of the broader community. Um, so to some degree, this presentation is, is uh, essentially a summary of that work and how it pertains to our development of our next generation systems. The key properties are fairly straightforward. They are the number of qubits, which determines the maximum number of variables of problems that can be posed directly to the hardware. <clears throat> the connectivity, which is the arrangement of programmable couplings between the qubits. The energy scale, which describes the strength of interaction between the qubits, and uh, the level of coherence, which determines the time scale over which the system will interact with the environment. Okay, so starting with those key metrics, uh, I want to start with some work uh, by my colleague Jack Raymond, in which he uses a hybrid method to solve spin glass problems on a, on a 3D lattice. Um, <clears throat> in, this, in this case that I'm showing, it's a, a, the native, a native lattice on the Pegasus topology of our advantage systems. The reason to use a hybrid algorithm here is to be able to um, solve problems that are larger than can, can fit directly on the hardware. Uh, but in this work, the, uh, the, the point of this slide <coughs> is to show that the QPU, which is a quantum processing unit in the, uh, the quantum annealing hardware, um, uh, pr provides a clear advantage within the, in the context of this hybrid algorithm. And to show that, I have this, this orange curve on the bottom um, in which the QPU is used as a part of this hybrid algorithm. In this, in this hybrid method, the uh, sub graphs of the larger problem that do fit on the processor are chosen and run on the processor and the solutions are inserted back into the problem, into the full problem. That's done iteratively to, uh, to, to find solutions to the, the full problem. Uh, when the advantage QPU, which solves problems on these sub graphs, is replaced with a classical alternative, in this case, running simulated annealing, uh, performance is degraded. This is, highlights the, the, the value that the QPU brings. Uh, what I haven't shown here, but you can find in the, in the reference, is uh, that the hybrid method with the advantage Q, QPU also beats simulated annealing running on the full problem rather than within the hybrid method. What I really want to focus on with this work is the comparison of performance between our current generation advantage systems and the previous generation D-Wave 2000Q. And what this plot shows is that there's a clear improvement in performance uh, in this hybrid algorithm. <clears throat> For example, in terms of uh, relative error, the advantage system can find uh, solutions faster, or in terms of uh, a fixed time, the, uh, the uh, advantage 
system can find solutions with significantly lower uh, relative error. <clears throat> and the reason for this is, is it boils down to the, the larger number of qubits and the higher connectivity in the advantage processor. And so the conclusion is that for our next generation system beyond advantage, we'd really like to continue scaling the number of qubits and the connectivity. Okay, these hybrid algorithms that I've focused on here are particularly important for commercial applications where problems tend to be larger than can be posed uh, directly on the, on the processor. And that the value that the QPU brings to those hybrid algorithms is going to increase the, the, lar the larger uh, scale and uh, higher connectivity, the, uh, the native a QPU um, topology. <clears throat> okay, so next on the list of key metrics is coherence. And uh, so earlier in the week, my colleague, colleague Mohammed Amin presented results showing coherent quantum annealing in a 1D chain. And uh, so this work really demonstrates that as you go to short annealing times, annealing times that are, are short enough that the Ising spin system uh, does not have time to exchange energy with the environment, that we enter a regime in which uh, dynamics follow the fr follow sh ideal Schrodinger dynamics, in this case on a 1D chain uh, showing the kibble Zurich uh, kink density, which decreases um, as a power law with annealing time, the, uh, the measured kink density follows very closely with the uh, theoretical expectation um, up to an annealing time at which the system begins to interact with the environment uh, and thermal excitations uh, generate an excess of, of kinks. And, uh, and that is highlighted by the fact that once you get into that regime, you start being sensitive to the temperature. You start seeing a dependence on the temperature that, that is not present uh, for shorter anneal times where the system is effectively decoupled from the environment. So this, uh, this work was demonstrated that really we can enter the, into the coherent regime and it also shows clearly that if we can increase the coherence in our system, we can continue to follow this theoretical scaling curve and expect uh, to have improved uh, error rates. This kink density is essentially an, an error rate, improved quality of solutions. And so this provides a strong motivation for us to continue increasing coherence. Taking this a step further, uh, my colleague, Andrew King, uh, looked at 3D spin glass instances in the coherent regime, and again, found excellent agreement with theoretical predictions um, for short anneal times in, in, uh, in the coherent regime, uh, which deviate at longer anneal times when the system begins to interact with the environment. Uh, so again, this shows that if we can increase anneal time, then our solution quality will follow this, uh, this scaling. And in particular, this, this work is particularly exciting because the scaling followed uh, by the system in the coherent regime in excellent agreement with theory is better than the scaling exhibited by uh, classical alternative, or alternatives in this case simulated annealing and simulated quantum annealing. So that means that as we increase coherence, not only are our solution quality is going to improve, um, but we are going to uh, continue to improve relative to uh, classical algorithms. So clearly we'd like to have higher coherence. We'd also like to have higher energy scale uh, again, energy scale characterizes the strength of interaction between the environment, or it characterizes the, uh, the gap sizes uh, in the system. And uh, so the larger the energy scale, once we do 
enter the regime in which thermal excitation uh, becomes important, a higher energy scale meet directly results in a lower probability of excitation, even in thermal equilibrium. So that, that uh, would be nice to have as well in our next generation system. So that brings me to our next generation system, which we have called Advantage 2. It will have more than 7,000 qubits. It will have higher connectivity, uh, degree 20 or 20 couplers per qubit up from 15 on our advantage system. Uh, with a new arrangement of connections between qubits that we're calling the Zephyr topology. It will have higher energy scale and it will have higher coherence. Uh, the Zephyr topology in particular, you can find details in this technical report uh, published on our website. And the Advantage 2 system is due for release in the 2023 to 2024 timeframe. Um, in fact, as of one week ago, we have a prototype that we have made available to our customers via our Leap Quantum Cloud service. Uh, this early prototype is a small scale version of the Advantage 2 architecture with uh, just over 500 qubits. It does feature the new Zephyr topology with higher connectivity and also has higher energy scale. And uh, we have shown in this technical report that you can also find on the website uh, that it already outperforms advantage in, in several empirical case studies. And uh, you know, this is something if you, if you sign up for our, our LEAP service, you can actually go and test and compare with our existing Advantage systems. Um, so the, that Advantage 2 prototype that we have that is online, online now <laughs> was fabricated in what I'm referring to in this slide as Fab A, a rapid architectural development stack. Uh, we have in parallel with the architectural development of our next generation system, been developing a new lower noise fabrication stack. And the point of this slide is to uh, give a snapshot of progress in, uh, in the development of that lower noise fab stack, which we will use for the full scale Advantage 2 system. Um, and what we show here with low frequency flux noise measurements and also um, higher mid, mid, well, basically uh, um, a range of frequencies that macroscopic resonant tunneling is, is sensitive to. Okay, the, the peak width here is, is a measure of sort of integrated flux noise. What we've shown is that in our new, with qubits fabricated in our new fabrication stack, we see significantly lower low frequency flux noise, a seven, seven X reduction, a three X reduction in integrated noise. It's reflected in this macroscopic resonant tunneling peak width and uh, an order of magnitude reduction in, in uh, higher frequency flux noise near two gigahertz. And so this is, this is uh, very exciting because we expect once we've integrated this lower noise process, with our new Zephyr architecture for the full scale Advantage 2 system, we will see benefits from uh, the, the scaling with coherence and our performance will, will get even better than uh, we have seen in the, in the early prototype. Uh, so also at the beginning of the week, my colleague, Kathy McGue presented on the road to quantum utility and the notion here is that our, what our customers really care about is comparison of our, our system with uh, classical alternatives. And that's the, the notion of quantum utility is you know, does it perform better uh, rather than an emphasis on, on scaling. And, and so uh, Kathy described several milestones that we have achieved, um, starting with this milestone zero in which 
no overheads uh, of the QPU are included. Um, we have also demonstrated uh, milestone one here in which we include programming and, and readout overheads and uh, uh, progress on milestone two, which includes the indirect overhead of minor embedding, meaning that the classical alternative is solving a smaller unembedded problem and the QPU is solving a larger embedded problem required to, uh, to, to um, construct a graph with a, with a full problem connectivity. So what's next on this quantum utility um, road? Well, we think the Advantage 2 system will go a ways towards answering that and with uh, seven more than 7,000 qubits. Our new Zephyr higher connectivity Zephyr topology and higher energy scale, which we have demonstrated with our prototype available for testing now. And uh, the significant improvements in coherence we have seen in this snapshot of our, our new fabrication process uh, still in development. And so putting those together, our new architecture and our uh, new fabrication process and scaling up to 7,000 qubits is, is, uh, is what we're working on now. And uh, we expect to release the full system in the 2023-2024 timeframe. That's it. Thank you. Questions? Thank you so much. Uh, is it on? Okay. Yep. Thank, you, thank you so much for the nice talk. Um, and that's great to hear that how you're improving the flux noise. I, I'm just curious. Did you change the the pr parameters of the qubit, such as like the critical currents of the junction, or is the enhances in coherence um, more just from the uh, improvements in your fab processing? Um. Uh, I maybe I will say that uh, in this so in this particular in this work what I, what I will say is that the qubit uh, the parameters of the qubit and the geometry of the qubit are are the same um, for these measurements so we're doing a, a, a sort of faithful or apples to apples comparison in terms of the effect of the environment on the, on the qubits. Um, I won't I won't go into the details of the qubit parameters. I will say that in our our new our next generation system, our, our architecture, the increases in connectivity and the increases in energy scale is is achieved with a with a new qubit design. Thank you for the nice talk. So the, my question is, uh, in the current D-Web machines, the D-Web user can access the D-Web machine with the uneeding time, so with na uh, mainly the microsecond scale. So I was curious, so is there any plan in future that the D-Web user can access the uneeding time with the nanosecond scale? We would very much like to release uh, that ability for our users. Uh, that is something we were looking at. There's a lot of um, technical issues uh, with making that available in, a, in sort of a general way to external users. Uh, we are looking at it. What I'd really rather give to our customers is uh, higher coherence. So if you if you increase the level of coherence in our systems, then you won't need to go to these very fast, uh, technically challenging uh, annual times. You'll be able to explore um, coherent, you'll be able to achieve coherent quantum annealing even at the uh, higher coherent, higher annealing times. That also, of course, leads to improved performance as you can follow the scaling law to uh, higher annual times. 
So that's really our, our main focus for our next generation system is improving governance time. All right, let's thank the speaker again.